Hello, this is Guava Moment with the final Space Chem tutorial. Uh, we're going to be doing fusion and fission today. I'm uh, starting, starting off with fusion because I like it more and it's simple. Well, this is our fusion laser target. What it does, if there are two atoms on this, the left one fuses into the right one. The atom on the right becomes the sum of the two elements. Uh, rather than just let you think about that, let's show it in action. What we're about to do here is fuse a carbon into a hydrogen. Carbon is periodic element number six. Hydrogen is element number one. Add them together, they'll get seven, which is nitrogen. So, there we go, nitrogen. And you can keep going, six plus seven, 13, and then 14. So we can fuse things all together into one nice little tidy ball. I should notice that the triple bond here in the acetylene molecule instantly goes away when you try to fuse. That's one of the nice things about fuses, is that the target atom just sort of disappears and so do all of its bonds. If something is already bonded, let's do this. Okay, so we're about to fuse hydrogen into nitrogen, which will make oxygen. However, oxygen can only have two bonds. The nitrogen is, well, has currently has five bonds. What happens? Well, it removes bonds as needed. I don't know specifically how the game chooses to remove bonds, but it's really not going to be that important. Just know that uh, fusing can affect bonds in some ways. Sometimes you'll need to fuse hydrogen into a uh, very large element, plutonium element 94. Then you could go grab your one, drop it here, and start Let's see, alpha fuse, alpha fuse, alpha fuse, and so on. But you'll quickly r realize that to get 94, you're going to need to find a little quicker way, or a little more intelligent. But we can use a, a chemical sensor for that. Let's see. This is a simple way of fusing to get an element you want. You have to start the thing off going. Fuse. Is it plutonium? Nope. Fuse again. Plutonium? Nope. And it just keeps going for a while until you get your until it senses plutonium and sends it on its way. That took 378 cycles. Let me just show you a way that can help speed that up. In a lot of fusion challenges, it can sometimes be helpful just to have one of the Waldos just parking against a wall continuously fusing. This way. You can just keep bouncing for back and forth, and put a new one, and check to see if it's the, what you need. That only took 190 cycles, but then again, all blue is ever doing is fusing. But just to, I just wanted to show off one of the ways that you can use a chemical sensor with fusion targets to get to fuse into things that you need. Here's an interesting little quirk. Let's watch this solution. So we'll get a hydrogen, drop it here, and put another one. Then input a third hydrogen, the solution breaks. It tries to input an atom on top of one that's already there. Let's put a blue fuse there. Now what we're about to do is hit these two commands simultaneously. What should happen is that red should input first and the solution should break, because red happens before blue. But for some reason it doesn't here. For some reason blue fuse has priority over red input. I don't plan on having any challenges that specifically exploit this, it's just... I don't know if this is a bug or a feature, it's just something I thought you might want to know. Fission is very similar to fusion, it's just kind of in reverse. You put an atom on the target here, hit split command, and it'll split it in half. So we've got iron here, we'll split it in half which will become element 13, aluminum, and there. Split in half. Obviously you can have things break by trying to split again. So you have to... This is what I don't like about fusion. It, uh, to get something large into something small you have to clear away the daughter atom. It, gets, it can get a little complicated. It's, I don't like f uh, fission too much. Now here let me show you what happens if you have an odd numbered element. Cobalt's element 27. If you try to split an odd-numbered element, the larger of the two will appear on the left, the smaller one on the right. So we got silicon element 14 here, aluminum 13 there. That's pretty much it for fission. Let's uh, try to see some more examples. 
something to know is that if you try to fuse together two large elements, here's cesium element 55, fuse them together, doesn't work. That's because the would, these would add up to 110. Space chem spheric element only goes up to 109. So if you try to fuse something really large, doesn't work. Similarly, if you try to split hydrogen, that doesn't work. Trying to fuse an atom into nothing doesn't work. Not a way you can't uh, kind of teleport an atom like that. So let's take a look at this level. We're given water, we're trying to make phosphoric acid. It looks a little complicated at first, but uh, for fusion challenges you really need to have a plan beforehand. Good thing to do is to start up by adding up the output atom. So we got phosphorus element 15, add 8, add 8, add 8, add 8, add 3. If we add up the element numbers of all of the atoms in this, it adds up to 50. In water, 1 plus 1 plus 8 is 10. So we need 5 waters to make one of these. And then if you uh, do uh, just kind of balance the equations, so if we take away 4 oxygens, 3 hydrogens, from 5 waters we're left over with 7 hydrogen and 1 oxygen fuse all of that together to make a uh, phosphorus. So that's why you really want to have a plan when you're doing fusion challenges. Try to write things down beforehand. Okay, so don't get terrified at this level. This is uh, one of the levels that I literally think is the hardest in the game. Uh, it looks like all you need to do is debond your chlorine, put that there, take that hydrogen, put that over here, but then you see they only give you fusion and fission targets. When you do the math, it's something hideous, like you need to output three chloroboranes for every two hydrochloric acids. Uh, you might think... Now, let me show you a way that you might think that this works. But you run into a small problem. So let's input both of these. So here, you might think that, oh, well, we'll just keep splitting this down until we get hydrogen and fuse the results into this, until we'll get chlorine up here. Okay, it's a good plan. That kind of will work. So here we go. There's our chloroborane. Here's our hydrochloric acid, but there's no bond. What happened is that you, f you uh, using fission, you split it down to helium, which cannot have any bonds. So it's at this point that you realize that this bond that originally, or this bond between the hydrochloric acid has to be one of the bonds that started from this thing. I promise you I won't have any challenges quite this difficult, but there's one thing that you can take away from this. You can't split down to hydrogen if you don't have bonders. It just, because uh, it goes through that helium stage and helium cannot have any bonds. And if you're curious, this is the uh, horrible solution I eventually ended up with. It doesn't do a clean output. Uh, there's going to be a garbage ball. Every time it outputs one of each of these, there's going to be an oxygen left over, which becomes sulfur, chromium, germanium, up by eight each time. So it's not a solution that goes forever, but it works. Sometimes that's good enough.